Harry stood there and stared with his mouth open at the family vault. He had so many questions he didn't know where to start. From just outside the door of the vault, McGonagall watched him, her eyes intent. Well, that made sense. Being plopped in front of a giant heap of gold coins was a test of character so pure it was archetypal. Are these coins the pure metal? Are you questioning the integrity of Gringotts, Mr. Potter Evans Varus? No. I just have no idea at all how your financial system works. I'm asking if galleons in general are made of pure gold. Of course. And can anyone coin them, or are they issued by a monopoly that thereby collects seniorage? Only a fool would trust any but goblin coin. In other words, the coins aren't supposed to be worth any more than the metal making them up? Suppose I came in here with a ton of silver. Could I get a ton of sickles made from it? For a fee, Mr. Potter Evans Varus. Where would you find a ton of silver, I wonder? Surely you would not be expecting to lay your hands upon a philosopher's stone? Griphook! A philosopher's stone? Perhaps not, then. So, not only is the wizarding economy almost completely decoupled from the muggle economy, no one here has ever heard of arbitrage. Wasn't the muggle gold to silver ratio somewhere around 50 to 1? Harry didn't think it was 17, anyway. Bring in a ton of silver, change to sickles, change the sickles for galleons, take the gold to the muggle world, exchange it for more silver than you started with, and repeat. One competent hedge fundy could probably own the whole wizarding world within a week. Harry filed away this notion in case he ever ran out of money, or had a week free. Pardon me for asking, Professor McGonagall, but I understand that my parents were in their 20s when they died. Is this a usual amount of money for a young couple to have in their vault in the wizarding world? Your father was the last heir of an old family, Mr. Potter. It's also possible... Some of this money may be from bounties that had been placed on you-know-who, payable to his kill... To whoever might defeat him. Interesting. So some of this really is, in a sense, mine. That is, earned by me. Sort of. That makes me feel less guilty about spending a very tiny fraction of it- Don't panic, Professor McGonagall! Mr. Potter, you are a miner, and as such, you will only be allowed to make reasonable withdrawals from- I'm all about reasonable. I am totally on board with fiscal prudence and impulse control. But I did see some things on the way here which would constitute sensible, grown-up purchases. Trunks whose insides hold more than their outsides? I'm sure that when I'm an adult, I'll want one. And I can afford one. It would make just as much sense to buy it now instead of later and get the use of it right away, wouldn't it? It's the same money either way. And just what would you keep in a trunk like that, Mr. Potter? Books. You should have told me much earlier that such things existed. And that I could afford them. Now my father and I are going to have to spend the next two days frantically hitting up all the used bookstores for old textbooks, so I can have a decent math and science library with me at Hogwarts, and maybe a mini SF&F collection, if I can assemble something decent out of the bargain bins. Or better yet, I'll make the deal a little sweeter for you, okay? Just let me buy... Mr. Potter! You think you can bribe me? What? No! Not like that! I'm saying, Hogwarts can keep some of the books I bring, if you think any of them would make good additions to the library. I'm going to be getting them cheap, and I just want to have them around somewhere or other. It's okay to bribe people with books, right? I fear I cannot deny the logic of your words, though I very much wish I could. I will allow you to withdraw an additional hundred galleons, Mr. Potter. I know that I will regret this, and I am doing it anyway. That's the spirit. And does a mokeskin pouch do what I think it does? It can't do as much as a trunk, but a mokeskin pouch with a retrieval charm and undetectable extension charm can hold a number of items until they are called forth by the one who emplaced them. Yes, I'll definitely need one of those, too. It's like the super belt pack of ultimate awesomeness, Batman's utility belt of holding. What do you say, Professor McGonagall? It's in the best of all possible causes. Fine, you may withdraw another ten galleons. And a little spending money, like you mentioned earlier. I think I can remember seeing one or two other things I might want to store in that pouch. Don't push it, Mr. Potter! Oh, but Professor McGonagall, why act the part of the grumpy grown-up, when instead you could smile and remember your own innocent childhood, watching the look of delight upon my young face as I buy a few toys using an insignificant fraction of the wealth I earned by defeating the most terrible wizard Britain has ever known. Not that I'm accusing you of being ungrateful or anything, but still, what are a few toys compared to that? There was a look on her face so fearsome and terrible that Harry squeaked and stepped back, knocking over a whole pile of gold coins with a great jingling noise and sprawling backwards into a heap of money.
I would be doing a great service to Wizarding Britain, Mr. Potter, and perhaps the entire world, if I locked you in this vault and left you here. And they left without any more trouble.